absolutely beautiful astrology soulmates. It's me, Stormy Grace, and welcome to your weekly horoscope for the week of September 11th, moving all the way through the 17th. And my beautiful astrology friends, this is a new moon week, and it is a new moon that sits in a gorgeous trine to Uranus. There is the opposition to Neptune, so we're going to talk about what that means here in just a minute. But I do want to tell you, you know, taking a look at the week, things really start to pick up more traction as we get to Wednesday and then activities are like going, going, going. So as we're coming into this week, if you're thinking, all right, what do we got going? Just know that you've got a couple days here, Monday, Tuesday, to kind of get in position, get sorted with the week, you know, before we're going to really jump in and take a lot of action. Other big news that is happening in the cosmos this week is that Mercury is coming out of retrograde. And yes, it is not done with the post-retrograde shadow time until September 30th, but even the movement of stationing direct this week gives us a little bit of space to say, okay, something I was maybe working on, now I can actually like sign on the dotted line and get it done. And you may notice that even globally, as Mercury comes out of retrograde, business kind of gets back to going, not like it's going to be in October, but a little move forward is really going to be very, very valuable. All right, my beautiful friends, before we jump in and take a look at what the cosmos have to offer, I hope you will join me in my new webinar. It's coming up September 23rd, and we're going to talk about the sweet spot of finding interdependence. The south node is in Libra, that north node is in Aries, and so we've got this dance between codependence, hyper-independence, and these two things are trying to make their way to something in the middle that we call interdependence, where we really have this juicy, sweet experience in our relationships and ourselves and our finances. You know, so we're going to talk about that. And I've got a gorgeous 36 question workbook that I've created for you as well. You'll get that when you sign up for the webinar. So all of the information is in the description box down below, or you can head over to stormygrace.com and check it out under events. Now I have also got for the Stormy Grace birthday sale this year. I have got my packages for the rest of 2023 and moving through 2024 on sale for half off. It is four appointments, two sixties and two thirties to help you walk through the year with astrological guidance and support. There is so much changing going on that sometimes we really just need to have someone in our corner and have that support. So if that is something you are looking for and you're ready to make those changes and can use the astrological guidance and support. I've got that in the description box down you down there for you as well. So make sure you click take advantage before the sale is over. All right, into the week we go. Now we're coming in Monday with our first moon energy being in the vibration of Leo. And we're going to carry with that all the way until we get to the void of course moon happening Tuesday. And the moon will enter into the energy of Virgo earlier when we get to Wednesday morning, okay? So as we're coming into the week, again, there's some play, there's some ease, there's some rest, there's some chill. It might even be a little bit like, I don't know, I I just don't really feel like doing anything. I kind of want to hang out and be. And that vibration may be there, or there may be a lot of work or a lot of things that have come to your table and you're like, meh, (laughs) and that's okay. Try and keep your head where your hands are. That is something that always works for me is to just think, okay, let me touch the desk. Let me touch the table. Where am I at? Let me just put my head and my actions right here where my fingers are so that I'm not lost in la-la land and thinking about getting out of Dodge. You know what I mean? Now, on Wednesday, when we see the moon move into the energy of Virgo, now we're starting to go, okay, in my emotional life, where do I need to clean house a little? Or if something has been bothering me or it's been on my mind or I've been thinking about it for the last couple weeks, where do I need to maybe journal that, write that, get that on paper so that instead of having analysis paralysis about how I feel or what I'm trying to understand, I can get it on paper and then I can like see it. I can clean it up. I can say, oh, okay, I need to do this and make a little task list of what maybe I need to handle or I need to address in order to have my emotional life be the very best that it can be for me. Now, Virgo is also an earth sign. So I think about things in the material plane. What do you need to do in your physical home? 
or in your car or in your office to bring order to things. Stuff equals stress and disorder may bring additional stress to your space. And you may also have things, literal papers, receipts, anything else hanging around that you don't actually need. And this is where Virgo can be of the most service to you and help you discern that, get rid of what you don't need so you're only working with the energy that you do. Now, as we roll around and we get into Thursday, we are going to see the new moon happening later in the evening, depending on where you live, at 21 degrees of Virgo. So I want you to locate that in your chart. Where is 21 degrees of Virgo? Do you have a planet? Do you have a point? Do you have an angle? Do you have an asteroid? Do you have a fixed star? Anything that you're into in your astrology. Most importantly, though, what house is 21 degrees of Virgo sitting in in your chart because this is where we're going to plant our seeds of intention with this new moon. Now again, this new moon is sitting in a trine to Uranus in fellow Earth energy Taurus. This is an indicator that you may be feeling a little spice to plant your seeds of intention to try something new. I want to build something new in the material plane. I want to go someplace new, right? And even maybe something from a sub slash unconscious place is presenting itself to you and you're ready to take that adventure. And this is a great call to organize yourself, organize your life, get a plan together so that you can do that. Now, something to keep in mind is that the ruling planet of this lunation, Mercury, is still retrograde until tomorrow, but it is still in retrograde. So you may be having new willingness to go towards an old problem in a different way, like you have a different perspective on it, you know, and Mercury's been moving particularly slowly. And that I think has been to your benefit to give you time to say, okay, well, what really am I willing to try? Or, you know, I've had this same situation on my plate or on my table for a while. And am I willing now to come at it from a different emotional perspective. It's really a lovely energy. Now, the challenge here is that this particular moon also sits in opposition to Neptune. So what I can tell you about that is that that can complicate things. That can bring a lack of clarity, a lack of intention, a misunderstanding, especially with Mercury retrograde, to what you're talking about. So what I would say to you is whether you're doing a ritual in your living room or you're collaborating or you're at the bank, wherever you're at, you're talking to your children, be very, very clear with what you are intending to happen in that situation. What do you want? Just say it, put it out on the table. I would like for you to make your bed. Say it, give very specific instructions to what it is that you're trying to achieve. If you are at the bank, I would like to deposit $15, you know, like, I mean, it sounds so crazy, but there is a real opportunity for, you know, misunderstanding and a misdirection or a misunderstanding of intentions. And you really don't want to have that kind of conflict because what it will create is a pressure that can turn very quickly into a complication. So be as clear as you can. And remember, clarity is kindness. Oh my goodness. So I <laughs> plant your seeds of intention, even with the universe, be very clear. Universe, I am calling into me this time. Please help me bring my focus, my concentration, my mind, my energy to these things. That will be very, very helpful for you. Okay. Now, after we get past that new moon, the energies kick up here on Friday. Now, first of all, we will see midday that we see the moon get out of Virgo and start coming into that energy of Libra. So now we're looking at balance. Check in. Check in on where your insides feel like they are now, having done some cleanup with Virgo, in a better state of equilibrium. I also think that a Libra moon is just a good time to check in on your relationships. How are things going? You know, um, have you been being a hermit and and maybe you need to make a phone call and socialize just a little bit? These are great questions to experience as you're experiencing that Libra moon. Now we're also going to see Mercury come out of retrograde and we've been, it's not, you know, it really hasn't been the end of the world. Mercury goes retrograde three times a year, like every year, sometimes four. So this is not weird news. 
But I think this particular one being powerful in the energy of Virgo, many, many people, many organizations, many companies, the internet was feeling this one. So we saw Mercury start in pre-retrograde shadow time all the way back August 3rd. And this was at eight degrees of Virgo. So step back into August for me. What was happening? First of all, what area of your chart, again, is governed by Virgo energy, specifically eight degrees? So what started to happen? What started to come to your attention that you needed to review? Or you were like, hmm, I'm not sure that I have all the information here but let me, let me step forward. You know, he started taking a little bit of action. Then we get to August 23rd and we see Mercury officially step into its retrograde at 21 degrees of Virgo. And now we're locked and loaded on the things you've been working with from August 3rd to the 23rd. Those things have all been in review, re-edit, revise, reconsider, recommunicate. You know, maybe opportunities came to you and it was like, yeah, this seems really good. I'm not sure yet. Or, you know, in my case, I can share with you guys very specifically, as we got here to Spain, we had two of our last very big appointments that needed to be done. They needed to be done to seal the deal, to get us our residency cards. And we were on top of it. We were where we needed to be. We had all of our documents. Everything was right. And it's funny because Mercury is in retrograde and I was standing outside of this government agency and I was like, it's not going to happen. For whatever reason, you know, just knowing Mercury was retrograde, I was like, this isn't going to happen. And sure enough, we walked into the building and they said, we can't do anyone's sessions today. The internet is down across both of the buildings that we needed to be in. And in fact, it's down on this entire side of the city, right? So like how Mercury retrograde is that? So even your attempts maybe to sign on the dotted line where you needed to kind of eluded you at this time. But now as we get to the 15th and we see Mercury out of this retrograde back at that eight degrees of Virgo, now things can start stepping forward. You have a little bit more information, you know, communication, business, commerce, trade, marketing, all kind of start to come back around. And we'll also see this in the global markets as well, I believe. Now, Mercury does not leave that post-retrograde shadow time until we get to September 30th and we see uh, Mercury get back to 21 degrees of Virgo and then begin to move on. But you can know that right here on the 15th, you're a bit in the clear to start making decisions and allowing some things to move forward. Now, we are not done. We are not done because the sun is also going to hit into this trine with Uranus. Now, we've seen this at the beginning of the year. Back up to January 5th, the sun was in a trine to Uranus at that particular time. And it was like, whoa, what was the different thing that presented itself? Maybe there were no like, you know, there was no fireworks in the sky for you, but something, go back in your journaling, go back in your calendar, go, <laughs> go back in your text messages. What was something new where it was like, wow, I can try something different. I can get outside of my box or boom, that was really different, you know, good or bad. It was really maybe something very Uranian surprising, but it likely would have been in the material plane, right? So funny enough, I can tell you guys again, we had invested in some things on our way to Spain and we found out during the Mercury retrograde that we don't need them. So we were able to issue the request for refund, very Taurus energy to end this relationship and have the refund, you know, from this other company and you want to know when they're issuing that you're absolutely right they're going to be issuing it on the 15th so what about that right and when we flash back we made these arrangements around that time in january so go back in your life in your chart in your data to see where this surprise is also available to you because with mercury out of retrograde you have license to have a new contact, make a new friend, try something in a very different way to help you get done what you need to get done at this particular time. Really very cool. Okay. Now when we get to Saturday, we're going to see Venus is in a square here with Jupiter. We've seen this already twice. 
June 11th, we saw it, and we also saw it August 22nd. So this is like the culmination of these two in conversation of this particular square aspect. As Venus and Jupiter were squaring each of these times, if you think of the first one that happened June 11th, what was going on? It was like, all right, maybe this isn't the way that I need to do this anymore. Like it starts to become this question and sometimes it's a little bittersweet to tell the truth. You know, it can be like, but I kind of like this or even though I am excited about this thing or I'm interested in this thing over here, it does mean I have to give up something else in order to engage that, right? So it's kind of the first hit maybe came June 11th and then we come around to August 22nd and you're really, as Venus is retrograding, you're really looking through this and you're going, okay, wait, you know, where do I need to go over where I valued this particular thing in a certain way for a very long time? It was important to me. It was a goal. It meant something to me. And now, you know, maybe I had an expectation of a person, place, or thing. And now that's not something that I think can work out anymore. It's not something that I want or value anymore. Venus is still Venus. So if they're was money or things like that going on, I will tell you, you know, look at where that first hit in June got you on board. In August, you had to do a review of it in some way. And now as we're here in September, you know, the unexpected expense or the thing that you're letting go of or the thing that has changed in value, you're shedding the expectation of it, is going to bring you to a surrender or to a culmination to finish that particular series of these two planets squaring against each other. It's also an interesting energy because with Venus and Jupiter being benefic planets, sometimes it's like, oh my God, that is so good. <laughs> and then so good squares against so good. And it's like, that was too good. Um, I need to, I, I need to get my bank account together. <laughs> you know, so wherever this is lighting up and showing up in your chart, please share with me in the comment section down below what that looks like. Now, as we're going to close out this week, we'll have another void, of course, moon period to bring us to the end of the day on Sunday and get us ready to move into that Monday energy. So we're starting out on a little meh, but we're ending on a okay, we've done a lot this week. Let me rest and integrate what I've learned, assimilate the information and get prepared to spend a little Sunday doing a routine of some variety that makes you feel fulfilled, that gets you ready for the week, that brings you some kind of grounding or balance. I think it's a really beautiful week, you guys. Remember the energies kick up when we get to Wednesday. So take a break, hydrate, do good things for yourself Monday, Tuesday, and then get in position to lock and load Wednesday through Saturday, okay? All right, my absolutely beautiful friends, I hope to see you at the webinar, and thank you for being with me as I record my first video in my actual new house in Spain. Thank you for being with me along the journey. Can't wait to share more with you. Find out about the webinar, find out about the packages, and anything else I can do for you in the description box down below, or come see me at stormygrace.com. Bye, everybody.